have a very special gift for you right after service at, at the four, out in the foyer at the Welcome Center. So please uh, take time to go by there. All of our other announcements there in our bulletin. And at this time, we're going to ask our ushers to come forward as to give uh, God praise today through giving and give Him honor uh, for all of His blessings in our life. Uh, great to see Corinne Hatley's family with us this morning. They come to celebrate her birthday. She is 29 again. All right, there you go. So uh, we appreciate them being here to celebrate her uh, birthday and appreciate Sister Corinne and her love for the Lord and uh, for the church and life. And we just give God thanksgiving. Amen. As we pray this morning, uh, let's continue to pray for Rhonda Smith, who is still in the hospital at Catawba. So please remember her in prayer. And uh, also this morning, if you will, remember Brother David Brown. Uh, Brother David and uh, Cheryl have been coming to uh, church here. uh, And he is uh, preaching this morning in Burnsville. So please remember Brother David in prayer that God would use him in a special way, and uh, we just want to give God praise for his blessings. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right here in just a second. Ask the Lord's blessing over the offering and the opportunity God gives us to give to him. Uh, the Bible calls us and tells us, hey, uh, you'll be blessed if you give 10%. Y'all know what 10% is, right? Uh, said, if you'll give 10% of tithes to the Lord, uh, he said, I'll open a window to you uh, and pour out a blessing on your life. And then he said, we'd give an offering. That, uh, that offering that we give uh, goes to uh, honor his name. And here at Poopy's Chapel, we want to uh, bless people around the world. We give to missions and serving uh, Christ and what God is doing. We want to thank him and praise him because God is so good. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. And we'll ask our ushers to uh, lead us to the Lord in prayer at this time. And so let's pray together. Amen. Thank you for this day. Thank you yeah. for the uh, stuff that we had in Sunday school and uh, Pastor Nuki praying, uh, preaching for us and um, Rhonda Smith, who's still in the hospital. Just pray for her to get back up on her feet yeah. and stuff. And uh, just pray for TJ's family who's going through a hard time with that. And um, just pray for my uncle to travel back safely and my grandma to come down safely and all the families in Sunday school. And um, just pray for um, the choir to do good. And all the people who's traveling this um, Easter and stuff and doing spring break. Just pray for us to do a uh, very doing class break, uh, thanking Bell Turns and all the others. Uh, God, thank for us for staying. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm glad God's in control. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for His blessings. And I'm glad this morning we can worship and honor the Lord and give Him thanksgiving. Let's worship with the choir as they sing. storm howls above me and there's no hiding place mid the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry keep me safe till the storm passes by Satan whispers, there is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow I'll rise where the storms never darken the sky.
When the long night has ended and the storms come no more, let me stand in thy presence on that bright, peaceful shore, in that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by.
Aren't you glad for the cross? Amen. I'll tell you what, I'm a life bound for heartache and pain, but I'll tell you what, the Lord put the cross in our way. Amen. I bless His name. My prayer is today, if you don't know the Lord in the free pardon of sin, uh, that you would come to that place today, that the Lord would speak to your heart and uh, draw you to Him, and you'd be born again and live for Him uh, and have life eternal. And I bless His good name uh, today. If uh, Children's Church, as the choir gets ready to come down, the Children's Church will meet out in the foyer, uh, ages 2 to 6. And I just want to throw this in there real quick. I uh, need to meet with all the youth and the youth parents or guardian right after service in the choir loft, uh, if we can. Let's pray together, and the choir will come down. We'll fellowship uh, just, uh, and just give God glory. Father, we just want to give you praise. I want to give you thanksgiving, God, for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for putting a cross in our life, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, God, you'd speak to every heart and every life. Help us, God, uh, Lord, to make a difference in our life, God. I pray, uh, Lord, for uh, Brother Nicky as he comes just in a little bit, the special singing, Lord. I pray, God, your will be done. I pray you'd save souls and change lives, God. Draw us ever closer to you. We give you honor and we give you glory. God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. This time we'll have Stephanie to come up and sing for us. Y'all pray for Miss Stephanie as she comes.
looking back along this winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but it's more than a cliche. There's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. Cause through God's been good Times replay and I can see That I've cried some bitter tears But I felt his arms around me As I faced my greatest fear Undeserved God's been good In my life I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams When I go to sleep each night And though I've had my share of hard times I wouldn't change them if I could Cause through God's been good in my life. I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change that. How many of you know he's been good? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bless the good name of the Lord. I'm glad that he's in control this morning. I'm glad he knows exactly what we need. Amen. Uh, and uh, I praise him for his goodness. I praise him for his grace. I praise him for his mercy. I praise him for his peace. Uh, and uh, I'm glad this morning we can trust him at all times. Amen. And uh, we just want to give him thanksgiving. You go ahead there, sister.
All right, please remember uh, Brenda's uh, uh, daughter-in-law in prayer. God just touch her and put his hand on her, lift her up. How many of you know he answers prayer? Amen. I'm glad he knows where we are this morning, and uh, God knows exactly what we need. I just praise him. Hallelujah. How many of you know he's, he is so good? I just want to keep saying that, by the way. Uh, matter of fact, when you read through the book of Psalms, David kept saying it like over and over and over. <laughs> he kept saying, God's good. Just taste and see that the Lord is good. Matter of fact, he got to one place, he said, oh, he's so good, and his mercy endures forever. And then he'd say just a little, another word, and then he'd say, oh, and he's so good, and his mercy endureth forever. And he's so good, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And uh, I praise him this morning that we can uh, trust in him, and I'm glad his mercy does endure forever. How many of you glad he came by your way one day? Amen. And uh, I'm glad today that we can uh, trust in him. And if you don't know him as Savior and Lord, guess what? Today's your day. The Bible says this. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Uh, sometimes in life we want to wait and we want to put things off. But I want to tell you what God says. God says today's the day. Amen. Let's look at somebody and say today is your day. Hallelujah. Thank God for His goodness. Amen. I want you to take your Bibles with, with me, if you will. And uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5 this morning. And uh, appreciate the choir singing and uh, Sister Stephanie singing. What a blessing. I'm glad that we can uh, trust in Him, worship uh, together through song. And uh, we just want to give God praise. While you're turning to Matthew chapter number 5 uh, this morning. And we're going to look at the Word of God. I want to remind you, next Sunday night begins our revival meeting with Brother uh, uh, brother Rick Koch. Uh, so uh, we want to uh, do some uh, preparation this week, uh, trusting God for some great things. We're going to have a prayer meeting every morning at 10 o'clock uh, right here in the sanctuary, uh, Monday through Friday. And then uh, the, the sanctuary is going to be open till 9 o'clock every night uh, to come and pray and trust God. And uh, let's just ask the Lord to clean our hearts out because I want to tell you something. We need Him to touch us. Amen and uh, God to work in our lives. Amen. Matthew chapter number 5 is where we're going to look this morning. And maybe uh, we've been talking about God putting the pieces together. How many of you know He can put all the pieces together? Amen. And uh, I praise the Lord uh, that God knows exactly what we need and how to take our lives where we are and all the fragmented pieces and all the pieces that are broken and all the pieces that are torn and all the pieces that look like they are misplaced. And God is able to put those in our life and put them together. That is what he does. He puts us together. Amen. And uh, we, we've been looking at uh, a couple different things. We looked at first how that God reconciles us. He is the one who puts that piece in our life back together. Last week we looked at using the wrong pieces. You know, sometimes we want our puzzle completed in life and we want uh, we want to, we want it to turn out like this, but we're trying to use the wrong pieces to get there. I, I want to tell you, there's only one piece and his name's Jesus and he can, he is the prince of peace. Amen. And he can give you that real peace. And this morning, I want to kind of go in a uh, maybe a different direction looking at Matthew uh, chapter number 5. It's a place where we're talking about relationships. This is going to be one of those uh, uh-oh times. Y'all know we have those times we come in church and it's hallelujah, woo, I don't feel good. This is going to be one of those times where it's going to be hallelujah, I feel good now because I just repented. Can you say Amen. We'll be looking at relationships. What is going on in our life? What kind of relationships do we have? What kind does God tell us we should have? But mostly, how do we put relationships back together after they are broken? When we look at these verses of Scripture, it's a place where how we think about relationships. Are there relationships in my life today that need to be mended? If I had the puzzle of my life laid out this morning, uh, out here on this floor, I want to tell you there'd be more pieces than I could ever put together. I can have an amen right there. But I want to tell you, hey, if it did and there's uh, that puzzle of life that is supposed to be going on, that we're supposed to be living a life according to the Word as the Bible tells us. That's why God gave us His Word, so we can live by it. It's not just to be on the dash of the car, in the back of the car. It's not just to be on our phone. It is so that we can live by His Word. And so God gives us that Word so that our pieces in life can come together to make the picture that He, uh, the Creator, the Designer, has started out and has intended for us to have. But in that piece, there is, in, in, those, in that puzzle, there's some pieces of relationships, of relationships we're supposed to have, of what our relationship to others is supposed to look like. Uh, our 
relationships around us, what it's supposed to look like uh, with God and with others. It is very clear in the Word what God says. Matter of fact, we're reminded often that we're to have, uh, that we all have this in our, that we're to have each other in our life. We are to have relationships. God did not make us just to be uno. Y'all know what that is, don't you? We're not just supposed to be just one, just ourselves. Uh, God did that uh, for Adam, and then He looked at Adam and said, "Oh, I don't, want Adam, you're gonna, uh, you, you need a helpmate." So He gave him a helpmate. Y'all know what her name was, right? It was Eve. And so uh, you watch that story as it unfolds, and then you see all kind of other relationships uh, that come from that. And uh, so we want to watch uh, today and look at these relationships. Everything else in life is disposable except for relationships. You think about this. Your clothes today are disposable. Y'all understand that, right? Just don't dispose of them none while we are here. Can I have an amen right there? Your car is disposable. It's going to fade away. It's going to break. But I want to tell you, those relationships that we have are relationships that you can read about in the Word how that are not only here, but it's relationships how that build for an eternal relationship how with our Father. And so how we see all these things about relationships. Relationships can do one of two things. They will either make you glad or they will make you bitter. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They can make you glad. I, there's relationships we should have that make you glad. You know those people that you love to see coming, you're going, Woo, I'm glad they're here. Then there's those others you see coming and, and you go the other direction. I know none of us do that, do we? Okay, just making sure. I knew there was the perfect people in here. Amen. We have in our life those relationships. Our, our lives navigate our relationships and where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing. But I want to tell you how our, how our relationships influence good. They influence us good or they influence us bad. Relationships can either bring us up or relationships can completely destroy us. Matter of fact, I want you to think about this thought for just a second. There is not a relationship that does not influence us in some way. You do not have anyone in your life that is not an influence in your life. They influence us in some way. Good relationships, how they encourage us and they support, but bad relationships damage us to the core. And sometimes in those relationships, there's things that we can't get past and things that we can't give up. Here Jesus is addressing relationships. He is uh, giving this, we, we call this the Sermon on the Mount. It's the place of the Beatitudes. It's the place where Jesus says, by the way, I know you're living life, and here's how to live the life you're supposed to live. And so He just kind of lays it all out before us and says, here's what you need to do. And so God uh, does that for us in these verses of Scripture to put our pieces together. We must be willing to allow God to put the pieces together of a relationship that we have. Now, as I've been talking about relationships, I, right now you are thinking of somebody that's either a good influence or a bad influence in your life. Or a relationship that today that you need to fix in your life. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We're going to get real in here this morning. Look at somebody and say, yep, it's fixing to happen. We're going to get real. When you look at the Word of God, God brings us to that place of knowing and seeing where we should be so that we, number one, that we can walk in the will of God and we can be blessed by God in our life and that we can bless others. And so God gives us that opportunity. I want you to look with me real quick uh, here in, ver in these verses of Scripture in chapter number 5. We're going to begin in verse uh, number 21. He says these words, uh, Ye have heard uh, that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Do you all believe that this morning? He said, And whosoever shall uh, kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry... Wow, this is how we know he was talking to Baptists. He said, Whosoever that is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Rekha shall be in danger of the cancel. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Here's what he said to do about it. 
Verse number 23. I love what God does for us in the Word, by the way. God never tells you what is wrong without telling you how to make it right. And he says it in verse number 23. He says, Therefore, if thou, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou rememberest that thy brother hast ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled. Put the pieces back together to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Wow. This morning, I want to remind us that God calls us to write relationships. God calls us as His people uh, that we have a relationship uh, that will exalt His name, that will lift Him up. When I think, first of all, about uh, this relationship, there is a relationship that starts in verse uh, number 22 when He talks about thy brother. He is talking about thy family. Whenever I go back and I think about these Scriptures, He's talking about somebody uh, that is that same flesh and blood. Wow. Now, this is the fun part. Y'all ready? Some people have problems with people in their family. Should I just give an altar call? And so Jesus says this, I want to let you know something, but in order for you to walk and the pieces go together in your life like they should, there's got to be some reconciliation. There's got to be some healing that has to be done on the inside of your family. Wow. These Scriptures let us know. In, in, in verse number 22, I love how Jesus starts talking about the family. In verse number 20, in verse number 22, Jesus starts talking about the family. He leads into the family by saying this. Are y'all ready? Verse number 21, Thou shalt not kill. And then He starts talking about the family. Y'all get that in a minute. He says, look, thou shalt not kill. But if you got something against your brother, it's like, uh-oh. Now how many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. He said, we've got to address where our family is. I want to tell you today, the greatest tragedy in the world that is taking place all over, not only our nation, but around the world, is families deteriorating. It is families being broken apart. It is husbands and wives that have no relationship and they are torn apart. Satan, he don't come to us and say, hey, here's what I want you to do and give you a big plan. He just starts planting little seeds to drive you away from one another. And so Jesus said, I want to tell you, hey, you've got to address something in your life. You've got to address first how that problem that is going on in your family. Wow. And you go back and you begin to understand these uh, Scriptures. We know uh, from, from life itself that the family is the greatest gift in the world. Did you know that Jesus created the family before He ever created the church? He takes that family. He, he created Adam and Eve out there in the garden. And He said, look, here is what you're about. You are here. You're to multiply. You're to raise your children. And so, wow, He gave them the greatest opportunity, the greatest gift in the world. And He says, here, this is the greatest thing that is on earth today. So God breathes that life into that first family to give them what they needed. But I want to tell you, it is the greatest gift. It's also the most attacked thing that is happening in our world today. There is a war on the family. And I want to tell you, that war on our family, and I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not just going to mingle, I'm not just going to go out and meddle in, in, in all kinds of different things this morning, but I want to tell you what, it started years ago on TV because it was happening in homes. You say, oh, what are you going to talk about? And I want to tell you, you, you do not see a Disney show I don't have a family that's messed up. You don't see any... And, and they make fun of families. If you're a family and you are a husband and a wife and you have a family, things start breaking down. Almost every sitcom you have does that very thing. Until we have called it the norm. I want to tell you, it is not the norm. The Word of God is the norm and how God blesses. Friend, I want to tell you, those relationships have to be made together. We have got to bind those relationships. How does that happen? You and I cannot do it. It is impossible. I want to tell you something, wives. It's impossible for you to live with your husband. That's almost an Amen. So it must be getting close to an anniversary or a birthday. You're not going to say anything. Amen. 
You know who makes that possible? It's the love of God in our life. When I think about the family, I think about Adam and Eve for just a minute. They have a perfect environment. You think about Adam and Eve in the garden and what is going on around their lives. They have everything completely perfect. But they wanted more. They wanted something that they could not have, thinking that it would fulfill them for the rest of their life. They just wanted just a little more when all that they had was already sufficient for everything that they would ever need. Friend, I want to tell you today, our world has cultivated that kind of culture to where we want and we desire more and more and more and more things, hoping that we will be happy. But they already had everything that they needed. God would walk with them in the cool of the day. God would give them everything they needed. I want to tell you, they, they separated where they were away from God and away from each other. What they thought would bring them closer and make them better separated them and caused them to go in a total different direction, headed toward death, headed away from the fellowship that they had before. And now God comes. He is the one who repairs it. How many of you glad He can put the family back together? Amen. When I think about our family, I think about these uh, Scriptures, Jesus uh, begins to speak that life into them. Oh, and you look, the enemy uh, that drove Adam and Eve apart is the same enemy today that uh, wants to come in in that subtle way and He wants to pull you apart from where you need to be with your family. I told you all it was going to be fun, didn't I? Did you know that Satan is waiting around every corner? He wants to pull apart your life. You know what? He wants to take that family that you have and He wants to drive wedges down in that family. He wants to bring in the fruit that Adam and Eve had. He wants to bring in, that, he wants to bring in those things in life that you think is going to make it better and drive it apart. When God said, here's, here's how you do it, He said, oh yeah, by the way, you got something going on? He said, just get down to the altar, go make it right and get back to the altar. It's real simple to put a family back together. It comes from that place of the altar. You can alter your family at the altar. When I look at what is going on and I think about the husband and wife, a relationship that is the most important relationship upon the face of the earth. If you today have a husband or wife, I want to tell you, you have the most important relationship upon the face of the earth. It is the only relationship when you go in the Word of God and you see God comparing salvation to something. It is the only relationship you watch Him compare. And that is that husband and wife relationship. He does it in the book of Ephesians chapter number 5. He said, look, he said, I want to tell you, salvation is like this. It is like that mystical union that happens between a husband and wife when they give their heart and they give their vows before God. And God knits their heart together as one. He said, I want to let you know that is exactly what salvation does. He takes those who are lost and that one who is perfect and pure, who died on a cross, and when we trust Him, He, he, he puts our lives together as one. He said, that's the way the husband and wife is to be. He also talks about the groom and the bride so many times as Jesus is referred to and the believers through the Word. The husband and wife relationship. It, it relays life to the children about how a relationship should be. Can I just say something today, husbands and wives? Y'all ready? Mamas and daddies, I want to tell y'all something. They're going to learn enough on social media they're going to learn enough on sitcoms. They're going to learn enough about life and about things that are going on, about how the world perceives things should be. They need to see how it, sh how it must be. And it's going to come through at that relationship of husbands and wives. It comes from that relationship of mamas and dads uh, leading them. Children's relationships. I want to tell you something. And, and, I, I love whenever I do stuff like this, the young ones, they just kind of sit back. Some of them, I know they're reading their Bible on their phone. Y'all know what I'm talking about? They're reading their Bible on the phone, and it's like, yeah, he's preaching to mamas and daddies, and boy, I wish my mom and daddy straighten up. Y'all yeah, know what I mean? Then he says to the children, Did y'all know that children have a responsibility in the family? Their responsibility is given real clear. 
Bible says it over in the book of Exodus, all the way back in Exodus. He said, children, you to obey your mother and father. Amen. Wow. And then he said, if you'll do it, your days will be long upon this earth. You'll be blessed. You know why you're blessed? Because you are following. You are following that example that God gave us. And that is to walk in that path that they are trying to leave and they are leading us where we need to be. He also says it again in the book of Ephesians. He said, look, I want to tell you something. He said, follow that godly path. And so our families today, listen, I want to tell you, if there's that division that's going on in our families, the brokenness of family is fixed at the altar. Husbands and wife, I want to tell you, listen, today if there's things that are going on, you've got to get it fixed. You don't have any time to wait. You don't have any time to waste. Listen, get up. Get your britches on like they should and get things fixed. Amen? Listen, don't let Satan drive that wedge in your family because when he does, he is driving that wedge into your children and every relationship that is around you. Uh, listen, let God fix your heart and fix your marriage and fix your life. How many of you can give me a testimony that he will? Amen? Oh, when you look at that family, he said, here's what you got to do. And he says over in verse number 23 and 24, he said, get that a place to the altar. Get it back to that place of going and getting that forgiveness, that repentance before one another and before God. And then bring it back to the altar and get things where they need to be. Wow. Boy, God's, God, can I just tell you something about the Lord? Y'all want to know something about the Lord? His instructions are real simple. God just says, hey, if you know something ain't right, get it right. How clear is that? How many of you ever had something wrong in a relationship and you didn't know it? That's what I thought. We know it, don't we? When things ain't jiving the way they ought to be jiving, when gears ain't going together like gears ought to be going together. Can I tell you, you ain't the only people that know it. Everybody around you knows it. In our life, he said, look, get in that place in our family to understand that you have the greatest gift on this earth, that you have the most, you have the most, the greatest treasure that has ever been, and that is that family. And I want to tell you, Satan wants to come by with his key and unlock your treasure and try to steal it away from where you are and what God would have for you. I want to let you know something. You are a target. You are a target for the enemy as a family. Let God be the one who defends you. Let God be the one who fills you. Matter of fact, that family relationship will either form a bond or we'll build a wall. I've talked to somebody before, and I said, hey, do you know this, this man looks look like they're really struggling? I'm talking about people that are like in immediate family. I don't know. I don't ever talk to them. I'm going, why? Have you got somebody you ain't talked to in a while just because you're you mad at them? Whoop! You got quiet in here, didn't you? Hey, this is Sunday. It'd be a good day. This is your to call them right now. Why are you sitting in here? Just say, I want to tell you I'm sorry. Because guess what? They could be dead tomorrow. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to lay over a coffin and you're going to go, Oh, it's all made it wrong. Right. Right. Come on now. Right. Hey, get it right while you can. Listen, don't build a wall. Form a relationship. Form that bond that will, that will fill your lives with the greatness of God. And you think about he also talks about in the Scripture, the same Scripture, verse number 22. He's talking about the word brother. He's also talking about uh, the friends that we have. He's talking about uh, that place of those that we, are, that we are with. He said, I want to let you know something. If you understand and you see that something is wrong, he said, that is the place to know. Uh, listen, that you are in danger of judgment. Wow. I, 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 think, I, I think about this little saying all the time. It probably just tells how elementary I really am. But sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Man, I remember getting in fights with my cousins. Y'all ever gotten fights with cousins? Man, I, I, we, we'd be in my granny's backyard while nobody was looking. We'd get in fights. Because if you got caught, both of you going to get a whooping. It don't matter whose fault it was. Amen. Can I have amen right there? I remember saying that sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Can I just tell y'all something? 
Words will kill you. Words stick in your spirit. Words will bring that guilt that you have never understood that could be that deep in your heart. Words can bring that offense. And he said, look, I want to let you know something. Those uh, that you use those words in verse number 22, he said, he said, look, I want to tell you, you are in danger of standing before the judgment with what you have said and what you are doing in your life to others. And I think about friends. Friend, I want to tell you, we should have that relationship with friends. Friends in our life, people around our life, the word, uh, brother here in, the, in, in this word, hey, in verse number 22, can call, uh, can call us to our friends, those who complete us. I don't know about y'all, but I like to have good friends, y'all. Y'all? My grandpa told me one time, he said, I want to let you know something, boy. I said, okay. He said, you need all the good friends you can get in your life. He said, good friends will help you. They'll be there. Those friends, those relationships around us. The word friend gives us uh, the picture of those who, uh, of those that surpass uh, our activities and, uh, and they cling to the real person that we are. They don't just see the surface. They know who we are and they're there in those times of need. By the way, when you look and you think about friends, I want to tell you something about friends. They can influence you in the right way. They can influence you in the wrong way. Friends most of the time influence us as much or more than family. Can I have an amen right there? How many of you done something? I'm going to ask everybody that's 20 and over. How, ma how many of you have ever done something that you knew was wrong, but you did it because your friends were doing it? Would you raise both hands and both feet, please? Amen. <laughs> they influenced you in the wrong. It's that place in life. But we know we're to have those right relationships. I made some bad decisions based on friends. Some of those friends today are dead. Some of those friends today are in prison. Same choices. They had a different result than I did. But I had an, somebody who intervened in my life. His name's Jesus. Amen. When you look at friends and you see, I want to tell you, God lets us know a lot about friends. He says it in Deuteronomy 13 and verse number 6. Friends, which is as thine own soul. He said when you have friends, you have people in your life that are as your own soul. He said entice them secretly saying, let us go and serve other gods. He said what about those friends that begin to lead you away? They begin to entice you to do those things that you should not do. Friends can friends are the care we need in life or they are the curse that will destroy us. You ever told anybody, hey, you need to get rid of those friends. If you have, would you raise your hand? Now, I want to ask you a question. Anybody ever told you, you better get rid of those friends? Would you raise your hand? All right. You know what? Friends influence our life. But you've got to have friends. God puts people in our life, those disciples, those brothers, those people around us that are there to encourage us, those people that are our support. And he said, look, I want to let you know something about those friends, those people around your life. You've got to have that right relationship. Those pieces of the puzzle it may be that, yes, something wrong has happened and that broke that friendship. Yes, there may have been some decisions or some words that have been said and now there's that friendship has dissolved. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's that one that used to be your friend, but now, you know what, when they come, you do this. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? He says, uh, by the way, you can't even get to God in prayer when you have not made that relationship right. I told you I was going to be good this morning, didn't I? He said, look, when you come to pray, he said, mm, that prayer is like, until you get that relationship with that person fixed up. Now, sometimes I want to tell you, people are not forgiven sometimes. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes people are like, uh, no, I'm not willing to forgive you. And he said, I want you to go to that person. You let them know you release that forgiveness to them. He said, then you come back to the altar. 
He said, hey, there's some pieces you need to put together. Can I just tell you today, there's many people that die with bitterness, and bitterness is the root cause of their death. They get bitter in their heart because of a relationship that is broken with its friends or family, and they never release that. They never get it to God. They never get healed from that. And they allow that to be their death of other friends, of ever getting close to anyone. And you can watch all these things begin to take place. And Jesus said it like this. He said, I want to tell you how you can fix that friendship. And that is that place of being totally restored, of going to that person there in verse number 23 and 24. He said, go to them. Let, let God heal that brokenness. That is there. Matter of fact, he said it like this in Ephesians 4 and verse number 31, that all bitterness and wrath and anger and calamity and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Wow. You know what God tells us? That people can tell, uh, tell who we are serving by what we're talking about. You know, they do know our conversation, right? That friendship. I want to tell you there's friends that can influence you good. There's friends that can influence you Evil. Proverbs seventeen seventeen says it like this: A friend loveth at all times. Wow. Well, I thank God for some good friends. Amen. Those that are there to sharpen your axe. Those that are there to help you in those times of need. Those that are there to remind you of what you're really there for. Those that kind of help keep you on course in life. You think about these friends and this relationship. Do you have people in your life that you need to get that relationship fixed? He said, I want to let you know I can put those pieces of your life together and where you need to be in the will of God when you allow me to put those pieces and put those relationships back together and bring healing to those relationships. Is there anyone right now that I have bitterness in my heart toward or a situation that I have it toward? Why, wow, you got to get those pieces fixed. you got to give them to the master, the artist who has the whole picture, who knows the whole picture, and knows everything that needs to happen in the puzzle of your life. And say, God, here it all is, and I give it to you, and I want you to fix those pieces, fix those relationships that I have in my life. Can I just tell you, if you have relationships in your life that are leading you away from the Word of God and the will of God, you need to separate from that relationship. And I'm talking about those friendships that are leading you down the wrong path. Amen? Those that are trying to pull you away from where you need to be with God. In a marriage situation, listen, you need to pray and let God begin to heal that, bring Him into that place. Amen? If you have been through that place in your life and relationships where, where marriages have dissolved and today you are suffering through that divorce and separation, I want to tell you it's a place to ask God to bring comfort and healing into your life. Bring that spirit of forgiveness so that God can, can work in your heart to bring that forgiveness in your life so that you are not stuck in the bitterness of life that Satan has brought into you. But listen, allow God to bring healing to you. It's those pieces of the puzzle that have to be fixed. Think about friends, those around us, those that God has put in our path. Friends, they are either the cure or, or, they're, the, or they're the cause. They're the curse. When you think about friends, we, need, we got to have friends that's going to us, lead us where we need to be. God restores us when we pray for our friends. You know what Job had? Job had some friends. Everything went wrong in Job's life that could go wrong in Job's life. Anybody in here ever had that in your life? Like every day you got up, something else was going wrong. Come on now. Amen. Job was there. And the Bible tells us that Job had some friends, and his friends kept saying, Well, Job, here's your problem. Here's what's going on. Here's what's wrong with you. And they just kept on. And it, actually, they were driving Job deeper into the ground. Here's what the Lord said, Job. He said, When you get to praying for your friends, I'm going to heal you. Wow. Sometimes we've got to pray for the person where that bad relationship is so that God can bring the healing that we need. Releasing it to God. Also says in verse number 25, he said, we're also, he said, we've got, we got some foes out in this life. He said, we've got some enemies in life. Now, I know we're all in church today. Y'all here, ain't you? We're all in church. I know everybody's life in this building is perfect. And there's no enemies. But he says here in verse number 25, he said, I want to let you know something. You've got some enemies in life. And I want to tell you how to deal with those enemies. 
Jesus said there's enemies going to be there. Here's what He said in verse number 25. Look at it with me. He said, Agree with thine adversary quickly, uh, whilst there are uh, in, in the way with him. He said, Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou shalt be cast into prison. He said, I want to let you know, the adversary around your life is not here to support you. He is here to destroy you. There's those who are foes. There will be adversaries. The Bible lets us know about it in the book. You go in the book of Peter. He said, I want to let you know something. The devil himself is your adversary. Uh, also, there's people that are instruments uh, of the adversary that can be used in our life. And the enemy, he desires to break into every relationship that we have. Uh, there will be those enemies of life itself. He said it here in chapter number 5 and verse number 44. Here's what he said. He said, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for uh, them which despisefully use you and persecute you. Wait a minute. If we're going to rewrite a new Bible, let's just take that one out. What do you all think? I mean, if we're going to really look at our life as a believer, he said, look, when somebody is doing you wrong, you're supposed to do good to the somebody who's doing you wrong. Wow. God said, you want to be blessed? I want to bless you. You want your pieces to be put together like they need to be put together? He said, I want to tell you what you have to do. He said, you have to take those that are coming as the enemy. And you've got to bless them. You've got to pray for them. You've got to be there to let them know that God is bigger than the enemy. And I want to remind you something this morning. God is bigger than the enemy. Listen, He is greater than every adversary that's coming against your life today. Matter of fact, He says in verse number 43, He said, You have heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. He said, That sounds good. He said, But I want to tell you how it really is. God said it like this, Love those who are persecuting you. Love those and encourage those. Here's what He said in Romans 12, verse number 20. He said, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. If in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Wow, God said, you want to fix an enemy problem? He said, verse number 23 and 24, you go to that altar. There's got to be a place of forgiveness in our life. You ever been to that place in life where you say, yeah, but you just don't know what they have done to me? Anybody? We just... Yeah, but I, I can't forgive them. They have, they have done this and they have done that in my life. Guess what? Can I just tell you all something? You are exactly right. You can't forgive them. It takes the Spirit of the Lord in us. So many times we try to handle things on our own. But God says, look, I'm going to let you know something. You get your pieces where they need to be in that for God can put them together in our puzzle of life. He said, look, there's got to be that forgiveness. Forgiveness only comes uh, through Jesus. And Jesus gives us that forgiveness so that we can forgive others like He told Peter. Peter said, Lord, he said, Peter was one of these fighting dudes, by the way. I mean, every time you looked at Peter, I I'm sure he probably had tickets uh, to, the to the wrestling match. And he was, I mean, the Lord told him, he said, Peter said, Lord, he said, how many times, by the way, I've already forgiven them one time. How many more times before I can knock them out? You don't believe it? He cut a man's ear off. He said, uh, Peter, he said, just let me tell you. He said, it's, uh, he said, seven times be all right, Lord, before I knock him out. The Lord said, nope, seven times 70. Peter said, okay, 490. It's 489. 490, here it comes. No. That word means you keep forgiving. It don't mean that you stand there and get run over. It means keep forgiving with that spiritual heart. Because I want to tell you what Satan will do. He will put that bitterness in your heart to pull away forgiveness. He said there's an enemy there and we've got to forgive that enemy. Do you have somebody in your life that you feel is that enemy? Is there somebody that you just... Really can't pray for because they're that enemy. God said, I want to put those pieces together for you. Then he says, he said, I want to let you know something else. There's a relationship that we all got to have, and that's a relationship with the Father. And he talks about it in verse number 26 about standing before the judge himself, about standing before God. 
And here's what God tells me and you. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden, they broke that fellowship. They broke that, that fellowship they had with God there that day. And so God came and He puts that back together by taking an animal and He, and he makes that sacrifice and He puts the clothes upon them and brings them into the right fellowship of life. God brought them where they need to be. Did you know our Heavenly Father today wants to put you in the right relationship? That's why He sent Jesus to the cross to die in our place. So that you and I would not have to stand before judgment and stand on judgment day. Uh, un, uh, that, that we would not be represented. That we would have someone who stood for us. Jesus stood for us on the cross. That's why He died in our place. So that all of our sins uh, could be uh, there on the cross. Every bit of forgiveness. Every bit of bitterness. Every bit of malice. Everything in our heart uh, was put upon Christ on the cross. Every bad relationship. Every wrong relationship. Everything that we have ever done in life was put upon Jesus on the cross. So that He could die for our sins. He took our place. And the Father says, now I'm going to put that relationship uh, with you and I right. And it happened through Jesus shedding His blood on a cross. Uh, not just saying a few words, but you and I committing our life to Him and saying, Lord, here I am. I'm a sinner. I want you to save me and forgive me. It is in that relationship that we are made right with the Father. Oh, and it's in that place where God calls all of us to be that we may come to Him, that the matter must be fixed, that that relationship has got to be fixed with the Father. Our relationships in life depend upon our relationship with Him. You want to have right relationships in life? Follow Him. Here's what He said in closing. He said in Deuteronomy 6 and verse number 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all of thy might. God says you want to have the right relationships in life? You've got to have that right relationship with God. That's loving Him because He first loved us. That is walking with Him because He has called us to walk in His footsteps. That is following Him wherever He would have us to go so that others around us may be blessed. Here's what the Lord told the disciples. He said, Your love should be so great for me that it looks like you hate your mother, your father, everybody around you. You say, wow. He said, matter of fact, if you don't do that, you're not even my disciples. He was saying to them, He said, look... Give me your whole heart, your whole life. I want to teach you how to love your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife. As you love me, I want to teach you what real love is. And so that re right relationship with the Father is us completely giving ourselves to Him. Love others so that we can love Him, so that we can love others as He would love others in our life. This morning, while I've been talking about relationships, or some in this building, you are sitting here thinking, yeah, I had a bad relationship in my life. Man, I had, a, I had a mother and father that really, they didn't love me. You never knew that love that you should have had from those parents. And today, friend, I want to tell you about there's a God who wants to be your father and love you and teach you what real love is really all about. For some this morning, you are sitting here, your life is broken. You have been through divorce. You have been through separation. You have been through those things that have torn your heart and your life and your family apart. And I'll tell you what, He is the healer. There's no one can heal like Jesus can heal. He wants to heal your life. Listen, let it go to Him. Let God bring that healing in your life. And so you've got some bad relationship with friends and family that needs to be put back together. That God, we need your healing. We need your forgiveness so that we can be who you called us to be. And this morning while we're here, there's some you need that relationship with the Father. That relationship of knowing Jesus, Lord and Savior of your life, of asking Him to come into your heart and to be your Lord. There's some that they listen, you're in a relationship, in your relationship right where you are. You are broken because someone has died out of your life. Whether it's a spouse, a child, but somebody in your life that's been gone. Bitterness has grew in the hole where that is left in your life from that. Hey, can I tell you, you can have a right relationship, God. I need you to feel that with your presence. I need you to bring healing in my life. How many of you know today He's able to heal us? Amen. Let Jesus heal our life. What God was doing this whole entire time, He's giving the Sermon on the Mount. He's saying, look, I want to tell you how you can really not just survive life, but I can live life more abundant. As He talks about in John 10. I'm going to ask us to do something very, maybe a little different this morning. But in just a minute, as we have time to respond, 
Maybe today you're in a place in your life that you need that right relationship with somebody. You know there's stuff in your heart that needs to be fixed. In just a minute, I'm going to give an opportunity to come and say, God, here I am. Show me what I need to do. You speak to me, Lord. Help me to hear your voice clear. I want my pieces in my puzzle to be put together like you would have them so the whole picture can be your will and your desire for my life. This morning would be a good time to say, God, I need you. How about as our family? Maybe this morning it's time as, as men that we gather our family and pray over our family on the altar. Place God, keep us together. Lord, work in our life. God, help us to hear you. God, we don't want anything to tear our lives apart. As husbands and wives today, maybe we need to come and say, God, I want you to restore us where we need to be. Not just the fuzzy feeling of love. That ought to already be there. Can I have an amen right there? But I'm talking about that real relationship, God. We need you to put us together. God, we need you to make us strong. Friend, I'll tell you, we need God today. Amen. Maybe some friends, some things that's going on. Hey, get it right. Get it clean before God. You say, they may not forgive me. That's up to them. Get it before them and God. Amen. Maybe in your life today you need that relationship with the Father. But you have never trusted Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Friend, I want to tell you, he said in the book of Acts, chapter number 4 and verse number 12, there's salvation in no other. There's none other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. It's trust in Him. This morning, God knows where we are. You may have a spouse you need to pray for. You may have a children you need to pray for. Listen, God is able. I want us just to stand together all over this building this morning. If you're physically able, let's stand together. We're going to pray. I'm going to ask if we would please no one leaving. Let's just trust God this morning for what we need right where we are. You said this morning, I need the Lord in my life. I, I need God in my family. Listen, would you be willing today to say, hey, I just want to bring my whole family down this altar. We're going to pray. I want to pray for my family. Men. Time to lead the way. Lead our families where we need to be. God, help us. Maybe this morning you say, you know something, my life, wow, I need that relationship with Jesus. I've never trusted Him as my Savior. Listen, I'm going to ask you to come. Y'all just step out and come. All these are coming. Listen, I just need to come. I, need, I want God to do a work in my life personally. I want God to help me. I need God to work in my life.